By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back again in the beautiful Vienna. We are back at Vienna Geden for another episode from this gorgeous event. And uh, this is me, by the way, sitting here. I was uh, live streaming the entire e event and commentating and now making the videos from the matches plate. We're gonna dive into the decks. We're gonna discuss everything that happened there. And like I said today, another match played here in the Swiss round. We've got Pavel, who's on a mono green deck. Mono green usually does really well, especially at these events with a lot of those control decks. Talking about control decks, his opponent, Philip, is playing control. He is playing a triple S, and this deck is blue and white, of course, for that control. Also has red in it, so it's got bolts in it, it's got fireball in it, and I believe also the usual black splash. Now, it's called triple S for three reasons. Surrender Pafrit, Sarah Angel, and Savannah Lines, of course. All these three creatures start with an S. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. First, a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to start with the deck decks and I'm gonna start with the deck of Pavel the player on the left and he is on mono green. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Czech player Pavel and I mean this is really your mono green right? Mono green usually does really well against these you know blue white controlish decks why they simply go too fast they've got kind of the horde strategy right turn one you play a one drop turn two you play more one drops or a two drop and just keep attacking maybe if you have the lanara elves or elves of deep shadow turn one um, you can also cast your ice storm turn two as a tempo play right your your mana ahead with your mana dork and then your opponent is a mana behind like that can be a big deal uh, in this deck, we do not see Urnum Jins. Instead, we do see Spitting Slug, another really good creature. I mean, it's 2-4. It's hard to kill. We see that one City in a Bottle main. And then in the sideboards, we do see those uh, Urnum Jins that can come in. We also see four Pendlehaven, which is quite excessive. But I think it's a good decision because look at the amount of 1-1s he's got in the deck. He's got Lunderer Elves, Elves of Deep Shadow, Scavenger Folk, and the Scrib Sprites. And of course, uh, the Dragonfly. So they're all 1-1 one, one creatures. And, you know, they just get so much better with that Pendlehaven. So Pendlehaven, a legendary land that you can tap to give target creature plus one, plus two. Now, there is this cool thing you can do with Pendlehaven is when it's on uh, in play, you can use it to pump target 1-1 one, one creature, right? Make it a 2-3. If you then have another Pendlehaven in hand, you can play that Pendlehaven after that. That means that one of the two Pendlehavens will have to go to the graveyard. Obviously, you will pick the one that's tapped, meaning you can start using the other one to pump another creature. So all of a sudden, you have two, two, three creatures instead of two, one, one creatures. And that, of course, can make a, a huge difference. Now, I'm also really liking the double hurricanes in this deck because one of the problems is with green, you don't have that direct damage. But of course, with your hurricanes, now you have. I think the big card that's kind of missing here and that every opponent is expecting to have to face is uh, the Berserk. We see no Berserks in this deck, so I find that a really interesting way. I would definitely consider just putting in one Berserk just for the surprise, but there's none in here. Maybe that's a good decision because your opponent is probably going to think there's a Berserk in there, so it's going to try to play around the Berserk, and the truth is, it's not even in your deck. I like that as well when like blue mages do that when they don't play with counter magic, but your opponent is still kind of playing around counter magic. Uh, another card that I would like to highlight here because I think it could be quite decisive is Maze of If. And the reason I think it's decisive is that sometimes you have a lot of these one ones on the board and your opponent has, let's say, a Suchi on board, right? Because his opponent is playing a Suchi. Um, normally, if you attack with everything, it means you're going to lose one of your creatures because that creature is being blocked by the Suchi. But when you've got Maze of If, you can attack with your three one ones and the one that gets blocked by the Suchi, take that creature out of combat with your maze, like it's perfect. You can keep attacking, keep dealing damage, but you're not losing any creatures. So maze offensively is really, really good in this type of deck. So 
I mean, I think we could be in for really short matches if I'm looking at this deck by Pavel. Um, I guess it's, we're now ready to take a look at the deck of his opponent, that's Philip. So let's have a look at his uh, blue and white triple S brew. And here we see the deck of Philip. So of course, those triple S's there, right? On the left, Savannah Lions, Surrender Befreed, and two Sarah Angels. Only two, not a full playset. Uh, but yeah, looking quite fierce and quite aggressive, right? They're quite aggressive creatures. And then you're combining that with that control suite from white and blue, right? We've got your Swords to Plowshares, we've got your Disenchant, your Counter Magic, four Counter Spells, and a Mana Drain. But what I'm liking about that um, aggressive package with the creature-wise is he also shows that in his spells because he's playing with two Psionic Blasts, four Lightning Bolts, and of course, one Fireball. So, I mean, that's quite good, right? You can use that after you've dealt some early damage to kind of burn out your opponent. I also think in this matchup, those lightning bolts, they are so good because, you know, every time he wants to put a giant growth on a creature, you can bolt in response. And just being able to just for one mana take out one of the creatures of your opponent who's a mono green aggro, I mean, that is so important. I think Philip here, because of the bolts main, because of the Surrender Befreed's main, for me is kind of the favorite here. Of course, Surrender Befreed's also uh, kind of risky against a green deck because green wants to go fast. With Surrender, you're hurting yourself, so you're basically helping the aggro player a little. But on the other hand, it is a 3-4 flyer for 3. You can get it on the board really quickly, and then your opponent has an, uh, a problem. All of a sudden, he cannot just turn his creature sideways anymore, but he has to think what he's going to do. So, I'm, I mean, I think overall, the Surrender Profits is here on, on, on the better side of it, in, in, in my humble opinion. You know, when you look at the downside of taking that one damage, but the plus side of you know having an early blocker and of course then later in the game having that pressure as well now do remember um, that uh, pavel is playing with mazes of if that's kind of the arch enemy of the surrender befreed he's also playing with the one city in a bottle so that be could be quite annoying for uh, for philip as well and then um, yeah when we kind of basically look at the rest of the deck this is you know this is solid a lot of players play these type of decks here i think in the sideboard an interesting card that could be interesting uh, after sideboarding is Spirit Link. Spirit Link is, of course, life gain. As soon as you have a little bit of life gain going against these uh, mono green aggro decks, you're usually winning. So probably those Spirit Links will come in in the second game. But um, yeah, this is the deck of Philip. We've discussed the deck of Pavel, and that only means one thing. We are ready for the match here at Vienna Geddon. Let's go. Game uh, number one, here we go. So on the left, Pavel with mono green. On the right, Philip, he's on the play, and uh, he's playing his triple S deck. It's blue, a white, and red, starting with a Volcanic Island, passing the turn. Are we going to see a one-turn play? I guess we, we do, right, looking at the list of Pavel. So many one-drops in there, starting with a Lanawa Elf the first turn. So that's a good start, just a Tundra for Philip. And are we going to see an Ice Storm? I believe we see an Ice Storm there in hand by Pavel. There's a Pendlehaven. So Pendlehaven is great. We see a lot of 1-1s one -ones in there as well. It's going to tap three, and are we going to see... Yep, we are going to see that Ice Storm. Quick counter spell though, and this is great for Philip. This is really good moment for him in the game. Countering away the ice storm means that uh, Pavel doesn't get the tempo play. He gets to keep his mana, especially the double blue for more counter magic. There's a Mishra's factory, so really slowing Pavel down here. And then there's that pass. What are we gonna see next? Probably more creatures. We do see an Ancestral Recall there in hand for Philip. Wow, that looks good. Okay, tapping the Lanawar to play a Lanawar, tapping a green to play a Scavenger Folk, 1-1 one, one from the dark. And there we see an Ancestral Recall. Yeah, and one of the things... Yeah, then you don't have enough mana, though. I wanted to say one of the things Pavel could have done is attack with the Lanawar, and probably he would have taken the damage. He wouldn't have animated the factory, and then he could have... Uh, could have also just cast the same amount of creatures and has, and would have dealt that one point of damage. Um, anyway, would you see a bolt here as well, taking care of the scavenger folk? Makes sense. I think if you're Philip, you really want to get rid of those scavenger folks because uh, it can hurt your uh, Mishra's factories. Do remember, though, that Pavel is playing with four crumbles as well, so has a lot of artifact hate in his deck. And I mean, the second factory, again, is not good news for Pavel, although I do believe he's got a crumble there in hand. He's going to tap the Lanawar Elves. There is a Scavenger Folk. Is he going to attack? I mean, he's got that Crumble. It looks like he's just going to pass or not. Or, oh, of course, Philip is thinking about countering here. Countering the other Scavenger Folk. 
There we see him tapping two more. Okay, there's a city in a bottle, so that could stop those surrenders. And there's another script sprites. Now, the big thing here, the big problem I have here for Pavel, that is, is that he hasn't managed to deal a single point of damage. I mean, Philip is still on 20, and that's really good news for him. I mean, green is a super aggressive deck. He should have been able to deal at least some damage now. And all he really has got is that is that one script sprites next turn. There's the attack for four, animating both factories. And there is also a strip mine on the Pendlehaven. Ah, oh, man, that Pendlehaven is really a key card in the deck, especially in blocking those factories. But you actually don't even want to think about blocking if you're playing mono green. But it looks like Pavel will kind of be, uh, be forced into that role. So one forest, two Lanora elves, so they can make green as well. And that one script sprites. Spitting slug could be quite useful at this stage. Okay, this is good. So a strip mine also has a crumble, I believe, in hand still to deal with uh, one of the two factories. So should be able to kill both next turn if Philip attacks with them. If that's the case, I would definitely turn the creature sideways, just attack for three. And it looks like that's exactly what he does. Attacking for three here, putting Philip on 17. Hopefully he's also going to track his life total uh, with the dice. Yep, dropping here to not 18, 17. Yeah, take every point of damage you can get. And passing to turn here. There's a planes. I mean, I guess if you're Philip, you're just going to use your soaring to animate your factories, right? And just attack again, swinging for four. I wonder if he's got counter magic in hand. Couldn't really see it. If so, I wonder if he's going to counter that crumble. Because I assume a crumble is coming if he's animating them. So he's animating them. Putting them into the glare zone, I guess, instead of the red zone. There's a crumble. Yeah, there's a mana drain. Had a mana drain. And then there's a strip. That means he only takes two. Going to drop to 14. I mean, that's not too bad. Also, you played out the mana drain out of his hand. The problem, of course, here is for Pavel. He's already top decking. There we see a sword to plowshares. Yeah, this is, I, I feel like this is really tough for Pavel. Only has two one ones left. Needs a good top deck here. We can't see it. Don't know what it is. I expect him to just attack for two, exactly because you don't want to trade, right? You don't want to put your two creatures in front of a, a factory. You don't want to do that. So. Attacking here, putting Philip on 15. Both players on 15 now. Second card drawn. There's the attack. Again for two, so Pavel dropping to 13. There's the pass. So two cards in hand now. And that's another forest, okay. Attacking again for two. Philip here dropping to 13. Ooh, and there we see a disenchant. Does that mean that we're going to see a surrender? Why else would you cast that disenchant? Tapping three. Yep, there's the surrender. Three, four flyer from Arabian Nights. Attacking for two. Unfortunately, those cards are in the glare zone. But we've identified them, so that's the Surrender Befreed, their 3-4 Flyer from Arabian Nights. It's going to, of course, uh, deal a damage every upkeep to Philip, but I mean, he's still on 13, it's pretty high up. And Pavel needs some really good draws. Okay, there we go, look at that. Yeah, now we're going to move, we're going to do some card moving, so we don't have the glare issue anymore. There we go, that is much better. That's me, by the way, there, on the footage. <laughs> It's weird seeing myself comment commenting on a video while I'm seeing myself. Anyway, um, there is another script sprites. Yeah, there's not really a good attack for him now because if he just attacks with the sprites, he's just going to lose it to that Serendip. Of course, he has that one card in hand. If it's a giant growth, you know, maybe interesting. There's the attack, so it could block if he has a growth. Of course, that's a risk because then if Philip has the, uh, the bolt. But anyway, it just takes the damage, it drops to 8. Philip on 12, could now swing in with two sprites, put him on 10. The problem is, of course, that Serendip. So two cards in hand for Philip, one card in hand, I believe, for Pavel, or is it two after the draw? Hard to see. 
And he's really in the tank here. Could be an, impor an important moment in the game. There's the attack for one. So going to keep one on blocking duty. Philip dropping to 11. Now taking another damage. Going to drop to 10. So it's 10 versus 8. Ooh, there we see a lightning bolt in hand. Oh, look at this playing at main. There's a bolt. Giant Grove in response. And I think this Grove is doing a lot of work. It's countering the bolt, but it's also making it so that um, Philip is not attacking with his own Surrendip. So it's also preventing three points of damage. There we see a forest. Pavel in the tank. I wonder what he has. Maybe another giant growth that he's thinking what to do with it. If it's another growth, I would be tempted exactly to just attack with both. There we see the block. Are we going to see a growth? Nope. Just one damage here. It's going to drop to nine. Tapping four. Oh, there's a hurricane. I'm liking this play because now you just have enough mana to kill the Surrendip of Philip and also dealing three damage, of course, to yourself, but also to Philip. And you're the aggro player, so just got to get him as low as you can. So he's now on six. Pavel on five. There's another factory that's not great. Can you just attack here with the factory? Keep one factory home to block the Lanower. There's the attack, so... Yeah, Pavel dropping to three. I mean, it's still tough for him, but I really like the Hurricane play. I think it was a very good move. There's the Scavenger Folk. Okay, so that Scavenger Folk could, you know, kill one of the factories later. Of course, now it's still a Summoning Sickness. There we go. Both factories into the red zone. Lanower uh, has to block one of them. That means Pavel drops to one. I mean, three or one. It's not really a big difference against uh, Philip's list. Preferably, you don't want to be on three because then you're in bolt range. Here we see a uh, dragonfly, emerald dragonfly, one one, a flyer from legends, and I believe for two mana, is it two green? You can give it first strike. And of course, that first strike works together quite well with uh, giant growth and also the pendlehaven. There's the attack, so now I can use the scavenger folk to blow up one of the factories. Has to chump the other, and of course, the uh, dragonfly is gonna die as a one one. He's being squashed. Oh, what's he going to tap? Are we going to see a Fireball? No, we're going to see a Sarah Angel. So Philip, of course, playing that one-off Fireball. That's it, winning game one. Yeah, I kind of felt like what I said at the, at the start, when he countered that Ice Storm, of course, then the game is not finished, but that's really a setback because you're tapping out. You're not putting more pressure on the board. You're really going for the tempo play. And that counter spell at that moment, I felt was really, really important. Anyway, now both players are going to sideboard and uh, we will catch back up, up to them, uh, with them, I should say, in game number two. And I'm wondering if we are going to see Spirit Link in that second game. Who knows? Game number two here is about to start. Of course, Pavel on the play after losing that first game. Let's see what he can do. After sideboarding, tapping the force, there's his script sprites, passing the turn to Philip. So some early pressure. This is what his deck wants to do. Obviously, look at this again. The Mock Sapphire here. City of Brass. There's a Bolt. And in a way, I'm maybe a little bit surprised about the Bolt. You could also say keep two blue open for a potential counter spell. You never know what's coming up. On the other hand, uh, we do say that, uh, of course, Pavel didn't open with the Lanawar Elf. So there's not a chance of, uh, of an Ice Storm here in, uh, in turn two. And that's definitely the card you want to counter if you're Philip. There we see a Lanawar Elves and a Mishra's Factory and a Pass. There's a Volcanic Island. And I do believe I see Sarah Angel in hand. There I see another, is that another red card? Is that a Fireball perhaps? That could be really good later in this game. Let's first see what Pavel uh, can do here. He could uh, swing in for three. That's one of the options. Having four or five cards in hand there, I believe. Asking how many cards Philip has in hand. So those are five cards in hand. Tapping two. Okay, there's an Argovian Pixies. And a Crumble here on the Mox Sapphire. Yeah, I think this is a good decision. Kind of try to slow him down a little bit. And if that's really a Fireball in hand for Philip, that's actually a very good move by Pavel. There's a tap for two. Going to take another damage from his own City of Brass. And that was a Demonic Tutor. Goes into the Heavy Glare Zone. Still needs to take the one damage, though. 
Looking at his hand, I mean, if that's really a fireball in hand, he could consider going for a Black Lotus, sack the Lotus to burn both of the creatures next turn. That could be a line, but he could also, of course, just go for an Ancestral Recall. Also, assuming that when you draw three cards, you're probably going to find lands as well. And there's a the pass. So I do believe he missed uh, a damage there. So let's see if that has any consequences later in the game. There's another forest. So could swing in here for five. I mean, uh, Philip is also tapped out, so can do whatever. Also has an ice storm there in hand. Tapping three. Are we going to see that ice storm? Yes, we do. He's going to take the city. I would personally. I would. I think I would have taken the volcanic because every time he's hurting himself. With the city. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, no. Now he's taking uh, three points of damage plus that point of damage that he missed. Yeah, so that makes 15. So now it's correct again. Here we see the other volcanic island. I mean, of course, you know, City of Brass can make any type of mana. So I get it. Also white. So that's a good reason actually to go for the City of Brass. There's an Ancestral Recall in hand. So I guess he went for the Ancestral Recall. Is thinking about that fireball. Gonna tap two. Yep, there's the fireball. I mean, I think Philip knows how important it is to kind of, you know, stay alive in those early stages. And then hopefully for him, it'll work out as the game is dragged into the mid game, uh, late game. Has, of course, that ancestral recall still in hand. There's the attack for three, so he's gonna drop to 12. And there's the Emerald Dragonfly, so the 1-1 one, one Flyer. And I think Pavel is doing a pretty good job just putting, uh, keep uh, playing out creatures, putting pressure on. This was the Ancestral Recall, and very quickly, we have lots of glare in that corner. So we can't really see his graveyard at the moment, but luckily we can see the cards on the battlefield. So three, three new cards here for, um, for Philip. There's a land drop, so that's, is that a savannah or a scrub land probably? There's a spirit link. Okay, so there's a spirit link from the sideboard. And that means, remember, with spirit link, you first take the damage, then gain the life. That could be important maybe later. There's the attack for three. Are we going to see a bolt or something? Nope, we're not. So he's going to go to nine. Also, no giant groves. Giant grove could really help here for Pavel. Okay, there's a mace. And I think if you're Philip, I mean, you really want to play out a creature to start blocking these, these threats. Okay, there it is. There we go. So there's the Surrender Perfect with a Spirit Link on it. Oh, that is unfortunate here for Pavel. There is another Mistress Factory. I mean, if he has a Giant Grove, he's got a pretty good attack. He is going to animate. Ooh, I wonder. Of course, he's got the maze. So whatever creature is getting blocked, he will just maze it out of combat. And that way he can at least still deal one damage. Look at this. It looks like Philip is just taking the damage here. Is he going to take three damage? Then he drop. Oh, he's going to take an extra point. Four points of damage. He drops to five. Wow, and Pavel is very close. Oh, Giant Grove. So that's three extra points. He's on a one? No. Okay, he's on two. Okay, because if he's on one, he would die to his own surrender per feet. But he's on two. So that means he now takes the damage and then gains a life. So goes from one back up to two. And here we see a Mishra's factory that can block, of course, one of the creatures of Pavel. So, ooh, he's stepping out, though. What is he going to do? Sarah Angel. I think he's dead, right? I mean, on the other hand, he does, of course, gain life from the Surrender, the blocks. But he can take that out with the Maze. Yeah, I think he can kill him here if he attacks with everything. Because remember, Spirit Link first deals, you first take the damage, then you gain the life. So if he attacks with everything, let's say the Surrender blocks one of the factories or maybe the Emerald. Doesn't really matter. You use your Maze to take that out of combat, right? So he doesn't gain that life. 
Then with the Sarah, he blocks another creature. For example, the factory. But then you still have a factory and a Lunar Elf pushing through. Oh, and look at this. Now he's attacking. Going to use the mace. Yeah, you don't want him to gain life, of course. But I think Baffel could have attacked there and already won the game. But of course, you've got to see the line, though. Here we see a very clear look of the hand of Philip. So we see Mind Twist, Disenchant, Swords. That Swords is pretty important. I mean, that Swords means and a Brain Geyser, by the way. But that Swords is really a good out for, uh, for Philip. Because even if Pavel can now kind of get enough damage through in response after Blocker so declared, Philip can always, for example, Swords his own Sarah, gain four more life. And that will probably prevent him from actually dying. But yeah, he's on two. I mean, Pavel is so, so close. There's the attack, though. And now he's going to start to take damage from the Sarah. He's got another Sarah in hand. The question is, do you want to play it out? Because you have to tap out. And I think it's a good decision not to. He needs that disenchant, needs the swords to kind of respond to a potential attack. He's got a very good hand, actually, now against Pavel. I feel like Pavel had that opening missed it and now it's going to be very difficult it looks like he is going to attack now though or not i wonder if that's a giant growth in his hand no he's going to tap he's going to play an urnum gin passing the turn there's a sword to plowshares though on the urnum that does mean four more life that he's probably going to lose next turn again when uh philip attacks What a game here, game number two. There's another planes. This is really good. You want a lot of mana if you're Philip. You want to be able to hopefully draw another mana because then you can have a situation where you play your Sarah and have two lands left, one to animate your factory or to play that disenchant. You know, you want to keep your options open. Do remember, of course, Pavel has that scavenger folk as well to deal with a potential uh, factory. There's a script sprites. And Pavel trying to be very patient here. Now remember, all that Pavel has to do though is get Philip on one because the surrender per freak damage will do the rest. So he's super close. So let's take a look at the situation now. We've got two, we've got three blockers. Okay, we've got four blockers. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six potential attackers. So again, I think maybe he can win it here. Although you have one of those creatures, of course, with a spirit link on it. So let's say if he would attack now with everything, right? Your two factories would be blocked. Your another 1-1 one, one would be blocked. Like four creatures would be taken out of the equation, but you would still be able to deal one point of damage, I believe. There's a strip mine. Okay, so this also changes things. You can now strip the factory. I think if he strips the factory, attacks with everything, he can kind of push one damage in, also because he's got the maze, and then he's gonna die in the upkeep. I think. Let me know in the comments what you think. Because, I mean, if he attacks, and whatever blocks the surrender, you take it out with the maze. So he's got four blockers. Yeah, so you've got two creatures coming through. He actually only has three blockers because you can take care of the uh, factory with the strip. And I think what Pavel perhaps is not realizing is the fact that you first take damage with the Spirit Link. There's the attack. And I think now he has to start chum blocking. This is really bad for Pavel. He's on eight, sending back the Serendip. Looks like he's going to block with the uh, Dragonfly. So that means an extra life here for Phillips. Gonna drop to, gonna go to three, I believe. And then, of course, Pavel's gonna take four. He would drop to four himself, if I'm not mistaken. So I think the situation right now is as follows. Hopefully, they'll change the dice for us. But Phillips on three, and I believe Pavel's on four. And I think he now has to attack with everything he has. The problem is, of course, he now also has that Savannah Alliance to deal with, and he lost a creature in that exchange. So 
So I think if you animate both, yeah, you, you kind of have to, don't you? You've got no choice. If you do nothing, you die next turn. Because I believe he's on four, but maybe, maybe he's still on eight. But you see Pavel trying to do the math. Okay, now he's correcting his dice. That's good. So he's on four. I believe Philip should be on three because of that spirit linked uh, dragonfly. There's a force though. There's a shake of the hand. We're not even going to see an alpha strike. Wow, what an interesting match here. But it's at the end of the day, it's two wins here for Philip. And Pavel did the math. He's like, I cannot get enough damage through. And I wonder if that is the case. I mean, I, th I think it was the case now, but earlier in the game, I think he could have won it. Again, what's vital here is that rule with the Spirit Link. You first take the damage, then you gain the life. So it means you're dead before you gain the life. So you only have to put Philip on one because of that surrender. And I think here he's now realizing it. You can see that. And uh, well, that's the thing. That's magic, right? But uh, what an exciting game number two. And I would have loved to see a game three between these two decks. It's always interesting to see two of these strategies, right? One more controlling, one very aggressive. And to always kind of see the game unfold. But uh, it is what it is, a 2-0 victory here for Philip. Congratulations with that, with winning it here at uh, Vienna. Again, and in this round, not the tournament, of course. Round. Talking about the tournament, we will be back next week with more action from Vienna. Again, and so if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you've done that, thank you very much. There's one other thing that you can do. Actually, three things. You can comment, you can like, and you can share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can join the show. And if you become a patron, you get access to the exclusive Discord server of Timmy Talks. You can join in on the online Timmy Talks events. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?